In today's video, how to do cardio for fat loss. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I'm gonna explain exactly how to use cardio for fat loss, what type of cardio you should use, and some of the impact that cardio is gonna have on the rest of the things going on. And today's question comes from my Instagram direct message. So if you guys would like, I'm gonna list my Instagram here on the screen. You can send me a direct message now. I'm trying to keep up with the questions. You guys are sending a lot of great ones, so keep it up. And if you like this type of information around how to build muscle, how to lose fat, how to be the best version of yourself, be sure to hit the subscribe button. That's what I love to do here. In today's video, I'm gonna explain cardio, all facets of cardio, why you should do it, why you shouldn't do it, what forms of cardio you should do because we are looking to lose body fat. A lot of people will tell you, you do not need to do cardio for fat loss. And to a certain degree, that's true. And I'll explain that in detail. But what I wanna say first and foremost is that cardiovascular exercise does have benefits other than fat loss. There are benefits to your heart, benefits to your lungs. So forsaking any, any cardiovascular exercise is probably a mistake. I also want to explain why cardiovascular exercise should not be the primary tool we use to lose body fat. Because cardiovascular exercise, while it does burn calories, has some inherent problems, which I'm gonna explain. The primary tool that we need to be using to lose body fat is understanding our daily caloric intake. This, and only this, is going to create a sustainable approach to fat loss. How do you do that? I'll link the video below on how to create a caloric deficit, which will explain everything in great detail. But for today's video, I want to explain what some of the issues are with using cardio as the primary tool for fat loss. The best way to express it has actually been shown in research. You see, they showed in the study, which I'll link below, that they took a bunch of people and had them perform exercise. Then they had them estimate their energy expenditure. They also had them replace the calories that they burned and what they found was people overestimated how many calories they burned during exercise, cardiovascular exercise, by three to four times. They then overestimated the need to restore their energy with food by two to three times. So inherently, we do not burn as many calories as we think and we overeat to compensate. Now having said all that, do I feel like cardiovascular exercise is a tool for getting lean? Of course. It's something that I use all the time. I prefer to keep calories a little bit higher and ensure that I'm having quality workouts and that I'm improving in all aspects. I'm not just looking to lose body fat. We want to make sure when we're maintaining lean body mass. And one of the problems with doing tons of cardio and maybe just restricting calories is that we over time lose some of our lean body mass and put ourselves in a worse position than when we started. The goal should be to improve our body composition. So let's talk about the types of cardio that we can use. Now, the most popular forms of cardio would be considered low intensity, steady state, what you see people doing if they go outside for a walk, walk on a treadmill. Also, another really popular form is high intensity interval training cardio. Now, high intensity cardio has gotten a lot of publicity because, well, you burn a lot of calories in a short amount of time, and there's also something called EPOC, or the excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, meaning while you're recovering from that HIIT exercise, your body is still burning extra calories, and thus you can create a deficit that way. The real problem that I found, and I've done it both ways, and I'll probably put some pictures and videos in here so, so you guys understand that I am a bit of an expert when it comes to fat loss and body recomposition. It's what I do for a living as a coach. Well, when you do a lot of high intensity sprinting, these type of exercises, it leaves you exhausted, and we end up exchanging our cardio sessions in the gym for NEAT which is non-exercise activity, things that you might do otherwise that you don't really consider cardio, things like going for a walk, just moving around, maybe playing a sport, things that we don't intentionally use as exercise, we start to conserve energy when we're not doing high intensity exercise. Whereas if you, lose, if you use a low intensity form of cardio, well, you're, yes, it's gonna take a little bit longer to perform it, but it can also be more enjoyable and there is no recovery time from walking. In fact, last year, one of my clients, Brian DaCosta, who documented this very well, did no intentional cardio. He did not go to the gym for one session, did not do any high intensity cardio. Now, Brian is a very gifted bodybuilder. He puts on muscle, he looks fantastic, but we got him down to stage weight, earning a pro card and competing at the World Championships of Natural Bodybuilding 
all he used was a walking desk. He would stand at his desk and walk at a very slow pace all day, getting 20 to 30,000 steps. With the new advent of Fitbits and tracking, one great way to manage what we're doing throughout the day is to have a step count. Set a step count for yourself, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 steps. This is a great way to make sure that you're keeping up with demand. Now, how do you start cardio with a fat loss plan? This is another great question. So we've kind of figured out where our calories need to be. We've figured out what our schedule is like. How much cardio should you start with? Well, even if you just start with walking on an incline treadmill or doing a Stairmaster or going for a jog around your neighborhood, it's gonna be kind of difficult. You're gonna find trouble breathing if you're not doing anything currently. So I would start light, 10 to 15 minutes, three, four, five times a week, and what you'll find is it will build some momentum. You'll get a euphoric feeling from doing cardio and you'll actually start to enjoy it. So start small, don't put any kind of pressure on yourself to think, man, I have to start doing this cardio and it has to be perfect. No, start a session, set the goal, and if you get exhausted before you finish, Give yourself a day and then try it again. I promise you, your body will adapt positively. Our lungs get better at breathing. Our heart gets better at beating. These are some of the benefits of actually doing cardiovascular exercise. So what is my favorite form of cardio? Now I coach a lot of people that compete in bodybuilding. The sport of bodybuilding requires that we get on stage with as much muscle as possible and usually the least amount of fat possible. So what is my preferred method? I love incline walking on a treadmill because it is very low impact to the body. It does not impact our ability to train and recover, something that high intensity cardio might do. So we're in the gym, we're still getting our workouts in, but we're able to create a deficit through walking, all right? Now, low intensity steady state cardio, although it doesn't sound very sexy, the intensity of our exercise actually dictates the fuel source. So our body is predominantly using body fat as fuel during these low intensity sessions. That, along with making sure that our diet we're creating is creating a caloric deficit, is going to ensure that over time we are able to lose body fat effectively. How fast should you lose body fat effectively? one to one and a half percent of your body weight per week. It can be a bit higher if you're more on the obese side, but for normal weight people, one percent of body weight per week is a fantastic rate of fat loss. All right guys, that's gonna be it for me today. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. I like to go in the comments and answer your questions, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.